Hi! Welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, episode 239. I'm Laura, also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called the Corner of Knit and Tea, and we have a Ravelry group also called the Corner of Knit and Tea. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, July 28th, and it has been a busy weekend and a busy few weeks, and I am happy to have some time to catch up with you today. I hope that you have had a wonderful weekend um, and lots of crafty time. My week last week was a little bit slow, which means I got in a lot of crafting. And then the weekend was kind of a whirlwind. On Saturday, we went for a hike um, with some friends of ours, and it turned out to be a little over six miles, and it was toasty hot. And I came home with a bit of fresh air poisoning, just a little overheated and a little dehydrated. And um, I did craft for the rest of the day, and I did get a few things done, um, but it was a tiring day, um, but good time outdoors. And then on Sunday, um, my spinning group met. We have a spinning group in Kansas that meets approximately once a month. There are a few months that we don't meet. Um, and it involves everyone from Kansas City to Topeka and a little further west, including Harveyville, which is where yarn school is. Um, and we all meet up at various places. This month's was in Lawrence, which is about 45 minutes to an hour from my house, so not too bad. And I spent Sunday afternoon spinning, and I actually did what I think might be a first for me. Um, I had pulled out a braid in the morning, figuring that my tour de fleece spins were over and done with, but I had pulled out a braid and taken it with me, uh, something I had seen people spinning during the tour. I'll talk about it a little more in a bit. Um, and I managed to spin the entire braid at spinning, which um, I don't usually do. Usually it's four hours and we talk and chit chat and there are snacks. And so usually I get about two ounces done, but I got all four done, which I knew meant that I had spun a little bit thicker than normal. Um, and then I got home and thought, well, why not finish off this last game for the tour? So I went ahead and sat down and applied it at seven o'clock in the evening. And it only took me about an hour and a half because it was not super long. Um, and I think I got between about 230 and 250 yards. So it's definitely a worsted DK spin. Um, and it'll be nice for a hat. And I got another spin done for the Tour de Fleece. So I usually don't talk about spinning so early, but it was just kind of unusual for me. So today's theme, honestly, is um, I'd love to show you that, but I can't. So um, that's probably what I'll call the episode. It's kind of a long title, but um, it just kind of relates to a lot of things that I did. So you'll be hearing me um, talk about that during um, this week's uh during this week's podcast, I have some photos that I can share with you, but for various reasons, I can't actually share the actual thing with you. So um, we'll get there. Let's talk about the tea that I'm drinking today. This past week, I went over to a friend's house and she presented me with a bag of Wild by Mudon tea, plot number 26. It's white tea from the Wu family and it's from Verdant Tea. It was a spring 2018 um, and so it's a white tea um, and she, her mother is uh, Chinese and um, has all kinds of great tea connections. Um, and also, um, I shouldn't just say great tea connections. She understands what a lot of the uh, Chinese teas are in a way that I don't, um, because I don't speak the language. And so they always have wonderful selections. And my friend, um, we, we have a little we have a little trade going on. I give her some tea. I bring her some things when I travel. I give her fountain pen ink and she gives me tea. So this is what I am drinking today, and I am drinking it in my uh, Kansas City Wizard of Oz mug, which says, Dear Dorothy, uh, hate Oz, took the shoes, find your own way home. Love, Toto. Ooh, that is really good. It's um, very light. It's got almost a little, I don't want to say perfumey. I'm not good at flavors, um, but it's light. It's, um, I tend to think that green teas can get kind of grassy and this is, um, white, so it's not like that at all. Um, and then it's got just a hint of, um, sweetness. I did put some sugar in there, but it's got a hint of sweetness that it's picking up on. That is delicious. I'm going to enjoy that. So let's talk about all the things that I'm knitting. 
First off, let's talk about the project that has been on my needles for a few weeks and that I was hoping to be finished with and did. So this is a review for Brown Sheep um, Cotton Fine, which is a cotton merino wool blend. It's an 80% cotton, 20% merino wool, 215 yards to a 50 gram skein, and the colorway was New Age Teal. So that is, I folded the label wrong on this one, the one that I saved. So it is Cotton Fine, and that is by the Brown Sheep Yarn Company, which which is in Nebraska. Um, and I've been working with a lot of their fibers in the last uh, week or so, but um, this yarn is actually really nice. Um, it is a fingering weight, um, and it definitely feels cottony, but the wool in it, um, it gives it a nice hand and makes it so that it's a little bit more elastic to knit with. Um, I didn't have a lot of hand fatigue as I was knitting this, except when I was doing kind of the upper yoke, and I think that was because it was like 300 stitches in the round. And I find that when I knit in the round, as much as I love it, um, you don't stop and take the breaks that you do when you're flipping your work from side to side. And so your hands are in the same position for a while and after six or eight rows my hands would kind of get cramped but of course after eight rows that's like 2400 stitches so that's a lot of stitches um so I would just put it down for a few minutes and then I'd be okay so let's talk about what I knit I knit the breezeway which is a pullover top out of fingering weight yarn designed by Laura Ayler. It came out earlier this summer and, um, or maybe like springish. Um, it is like a spring tea. And you know, for a while, um, because I worked in uh, a really air conditioned office, I didn't really see the point of knitting like summer tees because I always had to put something over them because my arms would be cold. Um, but now that I'm hanging out at home um, and I have the ability to, you know, wear whatever I want and keep the house at the temperature that I want, and of course my house is a little bit warmer than my office was, it was freezing, um, I have seen the benefit of wearing uh, knit tees and I really like the fact that you can sort of design your own tee um, with whatever ease or fit you'd like. So I suspect I'll be doing a few more of these kinds of things. But anyway, to get back, Breezeway is a yoked top um, that also has some raglan increases at the arms. It is kind of oversized at the top. Um, and then it is a high-low hem, as in it's a little bit shorter in the front and you do some short rows to make it a little bit lower in the back. Um, it can be anywhere from a cropped to sort of the top of your pants. I did more a top of the pants. Um, I knit the pattern almost exactly as written, except for the fact that I was sort of between two sizes, so I went ahead and kind of knit between those two sizes. Um, I cast on the size M2, um, which was for 39 to 44 inches, and it was suggested that you have several inches of ease. Um, I am a 38 bust. And then when I got concerned that I might run out of yarn, I went ahead and stopped a couple stitch increases short. So basically I had a stitch count that was roughly right in the middle between M1 and M2. Um, and M2 I think was like 35 to 38 or something like that. Um, other than that, I knit the pattern as written. I didn't do, I take it back, I didn't do the last couple short rows. Again, I was worried about not having enough yarn. And um, as it turns out, I finished under the recommended yarn, um, which is the second time in a row I've done this. And I can't decide if it's because my gauge was a little bit off. Um, do as I say, not as I do. I did not swatch for this. I was in a hurry. I started, I figured if it fit me, great. And if it didn't fit me, then that was fine too. Um, it does fit. So let me show you what I've got. This is the Breezeway by Laura Ayler. Like I said, it is a yoked top. So you have yoked increases at the top. You have a slightly, um, it's like basically a uh, cap sleeve, but it's a dropped sleeve. So the sleeve actually falls further down um, than you would think. That's what I mean by the top is kind of an oversized bit. Um, and then, as I said, you have the high-low hem. You can sort of see that. Um, it was a little bit difficult to block out so that you'd see the high-low hem. I also blocked it for length because I wanted the length. Um, and I think I'm going to enjoy this. Um, I admit that when I put it on before it was washed and blocked, um, I wasn't terribly pleased with the fit, but I think now that it's washed and blocked, I'm going to enjoy it. It is kind of, um, in my case, it turned out a little bit boxier than I intended. I think that's A, because I picked a size that was up quite a bit. Um, and B, because the weight of the cotton actually um, doesn't drape quite like it called for fingering weight and I believe it was actually knit in um, Superwash Merino singles. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. 
but cotton uh, weighs a little bit more than that. And so um, I suspect, well, actually, my the cotton did not does not technically weigh more than that. I just suspect that the cotton is not quite as drapey as um, or as um, snug in terms of snugging back up as you wash and block and wear as like Superwash Merino would be. It's not as energetic. I might say. Um, so I think mine will wear a little bit differently. Um, that said, I'm not bothered by it at all. Um, the yarn was a pleasure to knit with. Um, and even in blocking, I got rid of most of um, the de the increases and anywhere where I thought the short rows um, might uh, make a difference, you know, where there might be short row stuff and um, where the cotton kind of had a little bit of gaping because it doesn't doesn't plump up the same way that wool does sometimes and kind of fill in those gaps. Anyway, that is my top. Um, like I said, I enjoyed knitting with the yarn. It was very economical. I will have to double check on the price. Um, this yarn was sent to me for free, so I should um, add that I did not pay for the yarn. However, I believe, um, well, okay, I did order one extra skein, which I did not break into. Um, and that extra skein was... I want to say about seven dollars eight dollars so um all told i knit this sweater in just under four balls um and like i said i knit the medium too so that would be um four times eight is 32. so not bad for a summer top at all even if you needed to put in a little more it's still a sweater for under 50. um and i did have some left over i ended up knitting mine in about 775 yards the size i was uh knitting suggested 930 yards the previous size suggested 860 yards so again i suspect my row gauge was a little bit off um once i blocked it and stretched it a little bit although my stitch gauge is um right on so um that's what i've got and uh that is another one finished and i will be reviewing it on my blog this week um so if you're looking for all the details about exactly what yarn i used and exactly how much it is and whatnot um I can recommend that. Again, I enjoyed knitting with the yarn. I guess I've said that about a million times. Um, it, it's it's a really nice blend. Um, I generally don't stick to cottons. I know a lot of people really like cottons, um, and I like just the little bit of wool in this, and I don't think it will be overly warm. Um, the other thing is that since I used um, less than four balls, uh, that means that this is each ball was 50 grams, which means I used about 175 grams of yarn. So this is not heavy at all because it's super lightweight. It's um, it's like uh, under eight ounces. So because eight ounces is 223 grams. So it's probably closer to six ounces. Well, a little more than that, probably six and a half, seven ounces. Um, so I am really digging this and uh Okay, so let's talk about what else I knit. And this falls into the category of things I can't show you. Um, I mentioned a while back that I was going to knit a few hats for Hat Not Hate, which is Lion Brand's, um, Lion Brand has partnered with Hat Not Hate to um, uh, knit blue hats, the color is blue, to knit blue hats um, to be distributed in schools for an anti-bullying message. And last year they were able to distribute, I believe, more than a thousand hats. Uh, they distributed them in the New York uh, City, the New York City area school districts. Um, and they are doing it again this year. There are more details. If you just Google hat not hate, um, you will find uh, pages about how you can help, how you can donate. Um, this year's donation project was due by August 1st. That is so that they, um, I believe it is like mid-October that they distribute the hats, but um, they ask for them to be submitted by August 1st. The deadline crept up on me just a little bit more, um, a little faster than I was prepared for because like I said, I've committed to a lot of things in the last few months. Anyway, to make a long story short, I knit a second hat. Um, I had knit one back in February, March, April, something like that, and I showed it to you. It was a cable and baubles hat, and this one is kind of a triangle hat. And I have been using some Patton's wool um, that is in my stash, just Patton's Classic. And um, the patterns that I have been using are from Kelburn Woolens. 
Kelburn Woolens released their own superwash wool, um, a worsted weight wool called Germantown this year. And to commemorate that, they have designed um, a year of hats collection. Um, it comes out middle of every month and the patterns are free. So there are already seven patterns out there and I have sort of been working, I won't say working my way through them because I'm only knit two, I might knit three of them. Um, but I've been knitting them for um, charitable causes and just working my way through them because they're nice hat patterns. So like I said, it's kind of a triangles um, all the way up to the top with a pom-pom. And um, I also have a photo of, I photoed it with uh, the other one that I did earlier this year. And this one will be a little bit harder to see. But that is my two hats. Those are going to be up on Instagram. And the reason I can't show them to you is because today is July 28th. I take it back. Today is July 29th. I lied. Today is July 29th and they are due by August 1st, which is Thursday. So the reason you haven't seen them is because I packaged them up and took them to the post office first thing this morning. So I had thought about saving it to show you, but I really want them to get there in time so they can be used for this year. Um, so I went ahead and sent those off and that was two skeins out of my stash. Um, I had some leftover patterns from some project back in the past. Um, I will probably continue to try and knit some more um, Hat Not Hate hats and I'll just go ahead and put them in an envelope and hang on to them until a little closer till next year. I suspect they will continue it. Um, it has been one of their big initiatives and well supported. So that's the second thing I knit this week. The third thing I knit this week um, is a test knit which I can't show you. Let's talk about what's going on now. We are about to move into a new month and that means new projects. And um, one project that I'm excited to share with you is I am going to be designing a shawl and it's going to be a free pattern um, with a sign up for a newsletter. So that will be coming and then ultimately later on it will be a paid pattern on Ravelry. Um, but I am designing a new project with some review yarn. So I have worked with Monostil Uruguay yarns before and I really, really like them. Um, the company is a world, let's see, it's a certified fair trade organization um, and they do a lot to um, help uh, crafters in Uruguay. Um, in fact, they're, um, all of their skeins are uh, come with a location and a artisan. So they are proud members of the World Fair Trade Organization um, and it works through a collective of women in cooperatives throughout the countryside of Uruguay. Um, and they just announced that they were launching something called Alma. And Alma is their new superwash single in a fingering weight. Um, and it's a very light fingering weight because the skeins come 546 yards, 500 meters to 100 gram skein. So um, it is uh, designed to be used on US one to four needles, 25 to 30 stitches per four inches. And they have launched, I think about between 12 and 16 colorways. I can't remember exactly how many. And the ones that I selected, um, this is what it looks like in the skein. I actually wound one of the skeins last night. So this is Mercy and it is a um, kind of dark orange. Um, and then I also selected kind of a light peach, which is Inspiration. So Mercy and Inspiration. And um, I am going to design a uh, crescent shaped shawl with, um, it'll be garter with some stripes and short row shaping. So I am winding these up and I am taking these with me to Stitches Midwest this weekend. I already have most of the elements of the pattern figured out. Um, but as I am not a, I'm not primarily a designer, um, some of it is going to be work until the yarn hits the right amounts and I don't know exactly how far that's going to get me. So um, this is what I'll be working on over the next month and I'm just uh, going to go ahead and share it with you because um, like I said, it's going to be a free pattern um, or a pattern that will be free with a newsletter sign up um, and that will be sometime in September or October. My plan is to knit the pattern up this month, get it written up, get it tech edited and then launch it uh, hopefully in September um, and then ultimately the rights will revert back to me and I will um, put it up on my Ravelry page. So that is what I'm going to be working on. I just think I'm not usually an orange person and I tried to step outside my comfort zone and I just thought these colors were really nice together and they remind me of summer or um, like late summer, early fall. So that's kind of what I'm designing around um, and that's what I'll be working on. 
The other thing that I'll be working on in August is that test knit or sample knit, which I can't show you. Um, and then I'm hoping to do some more stuff for the kids and maybe even get a head start on September for the kids' sweaters. Um, so there's lots going on this month, um, and I'm going to be struggling to finish it all in time, um, but hopefully I'll have a few more things to show you as we go on. So that is what I'm going to take with me. I am going to Stitches Midwest this weekend. If you are coming, um, please stop by. I will be working in the Zen Yarn Garden booth, which is, I believe, in the, it's right around 3, 4, I will be working in the mornings every day um, and then in the afternoons I will be wandering around. If you are planning to attend and would like to meet up, let me know um, and or just stop by and come see the pretty yarns. So sip of tea and then let's talk about spinning. As of yesterday, the Tour de Fleece is over. So is the Tour de France. Um, it was a wonderful time spinning. Thank you to everyone who joined our team, who participated a little or a lot. Um, I always love just gathering people together to spin and enjoy midsummer, and I normally use it as a time to spend a lot of time at my wheel. Um, I didn't spend as much time at my wheel as I had hoped, um, but I did spin almost a pound and a half by the time I was done, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, I showed you the uh, first spin that I did, which was the 14 ounces of Hello Yarn. Excuse me. <sighs> I showed you that last week. I do have it over there, but I won't show you again. Those are finished and yielded about 1,500 yards of sport weight yarn. So I'm looking forward to knitting that into a sweater, although it probably won't be until next year because I am so booked up with samples and other things, designs, things I want to do. So um, that will marinate in the stash a bit longer and then I will pull it out and uh, figure out something to do. I've thought about doing another Moxie, which is a sweater that I knit um, last year for Nanny Swaymo. No, not last year. I think it was three years ago. It is, a hand, it is a sweater that yields itself well to hand spun. It's just some simple ribbing across the top in kind of a yoked pattern and then um, a plain sweater um, and it lets the hand spun shine, which is uh, what I would like to do with this other sweater quantity. So next on the wheel, I showed you all of those pinks um, on the brown sheep fiber, um, which is a Rambouillet Cor Columbia blend. And um, I showed you all the different pinks and told you most of it was for prizes, um, but I held a little bit aside to spin for myself. And this is the skein that I made. And I don't know, I think it looks like maybe the, the monitor will show you well enough and it's still a little bit damp. Um, but so here's the deal. Um, it didn't gradient as well as I liked. It did a little bit, um, but two of the skeins were like very obviously related to each other and the third was a little bit different. If you remember, we had like a really, um, well, so this is probably a good way to show this to you. Hang on, let me just pull these apart just a little bit. So this actually kind of shows all three shades. If you remember, these two were kind of highly related because they were pink. One was a bubble gum and one was more of a cherry. And then they also had like a lot of of um, kind of purple and blue in it. And so those two gradiented, gradiated nicely. Um, but this third one was kind of, um, it was more of the cherry without the purple in it. And then it also had some big chunks of white, um, but the chunks that I spun were not necessarily similar. So sometimes I got like really light pink in there. And then sometimes I got much more um, cherry. So it's not really a gradient, even though that's the way I spun it. Um, I'm not sure what I'll do with it. It came out to be about 425 yards. Um, since the colorway, um, the colorway development is kind of weird, I suspect that I will just keep it to myself. I probably won't put it up in the shop because I'm just not sure that it's anyone's, um, I'm not sure what it's going to look like knit up, which I'll probably do a shawl or something with it, maybe a cowl. Um, the other thing that I thought of that might be nice, um, because it's kind of a weird um, gradient, is to maybe pair it with something else and then do something like brioche so that um, it will still have like, because basically it's going to have like three distinct color chunks. I did try and blend um, bits of the fiber for the transitions, but I just don't think it's going to transition as it's going to look more color blocky than it is a gradient. 
So um, because of that, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Although I did think about getting like a gray or a dark color and doing something like brioche or um, color work knitting so that it would kind of um, blend a little bit better. So that is what I got. I spun up. It was 5.6 ounces and it was a total of 472-ish yards. I'm not 100% sure yet because I always have to wait for it to completely dry um, before I can measure, um, measure what the loops are. Um, so hey, I'll talk about that. Um, measuring your spinning. And the reason I don't always know my spinning, how much um, my braid measures when I talk to you. So, Nitty Naughties are generally designed um, to be, well, they can be designed to be any size. Um, my Nitty Naughty is roughly two yards, which means it is, um, it is uh, 72 inches. Um, or just two yards. So that means when I wrap a length of hand spun yarn around the Nitty Naughty and it kind of goes over, under, over, under, um, that is technically two yards worth of yarn. However, when I wrap the yarn around the Nitty Naughty, um, a lot of times it it's under some kind of tension. Um, I try not to wind too tightly, but sometimes it is under a little bit of tension. Um, so the best way that I know of to determine the length, um, this is gonna sound so complicated. So like I said, knitting knotties are designed to be a specific distance so that when you are done, you can count the number of loops and multiply it by that distance. So theoretically, in a perfect universe where things didn't shrink, where I had it under even tension the whole time, um, when I wrap around my knitting knotty, at the end, what I do is I count the number of loops around the knitting knotty, and then I multiply it times two yards, and that would be my yardage. But... In the regular world, just like in physics, when you account for friction and various other things, there are things that um, will shrink the length of the yard. One is just simply that um, I, as hard as I try, sometimes some of the yarns are under tension. And of course, if you pull a yarn under tension, when um, you let go, it's going to spring back and be shorter. Um, the second thing is that when I wash and thwack my hand spun, which I do to finish every hand spun, some fibers plump up more than other fibers do. Um, and in general, um, things like merino, things with lots of crimp, things that are super soft, um, but generally like really wooly things are going to um, shrink more. Um, fabrics that shrink a little bit less are things with silk because silk isn't very elastic. Um, bamboo, uh, alpaca, those kinds of things are not going to like puff up and kind of spring up based on their locks. So um, basically what happens is I wrap it around the Nitty Naughty and I count the number of wraps. But then when I am done, what I do is I measure the loop after it's completely dry. So I measure the loop and let's say, um, let's say uh, my loop actually turns out to be 70 inches instead of 72 inches. Um, that way I can multiply the 70 inches times the number of wrap and determine how many yards that I get. And actually what I would do is I would take, <laughs> this is very complicated, but I would take um, the 70 inches divided by 72 inches, which would be the two meters. And then that will give me a measurement of, um, well, I usually don't do it that way. Okay, the way I do it, <laughs> I lay the braid, I, I lay the coil, the loop, like this, out on the floor. And I don't put it in the under, in it, under any tension. I lay it out on the floor or on my desk and I let it lie there. And what I do is I take a tape measure and I measure from one end to the other. And usually it's in the neighborhood of, if it's super springy, it's like 28 inches. And if it's not super springy, it is um, like 32 inches, 33 inches. So anywhere in that neighborhood. What I do is I take that measurement, 28 let's say, and I divide it by 32. And that gives me a percentage of um, what I'm getting. It gives me a percentage of what I am getting um, in terms of yards. So 28 divided by 32, I think is like 0.87. So it's like 87% of a yard. Then I multiply that by two because each side is, um, it, theoretically each side is a yard, you know, or each wrap is two yards. So I multiply it by two and then I multiply it by the number of wraps. That was probably really confusing. I probably just 
annoyed you all. If you have further questions, leave them below and I will try and tackle them in a slightly um, more, more um, relatable. Anyway, so that is the reason why I don't often know the yardage because I know how many wraps I got, but I don't know what the final measurement is going to be. I don't know what how much it's going to shrink up. So I'm waiting for this because this it has Rimboulet in it and Rimboulet is a really springy wool. I expect that this will be one of the shorter braids. Um, it, it will probably have a slightly shorter length. But it is pink and it is glorious and the fiber was really nice to spin with. Um, it was soft. It was really easily draftable, and I did not find lots of naps and other things to pull out of it. Um, sometimes when um, fleece is processed, uh, there are little um, bits or bobs or little snarls in there, and I did not find much of that at all in this. Um, and I also have to compliment my friend Stephanie um, for her dyeing skill, because it's super easy to felt fiber. Um, when you're dyeing it and there was no felting. So really I, um, based on what I pulled off of those braids, I lost almost nothing. Like I wasn't picking things out of it. Um, you've heard me talk about um, other spins where I've had to pick vegetable matter out or where there are lots of snarls. Um, this was really, really nice to spin. Um, currently Brown Sheep is only doing undyed fiber, um, but uh, I believe they will be bringing out dyed fiber soon. Um, and this was really nice. So if I had more ambitions to um, say dye a sweater for myself, dye a sweater a lot, um, I would be really interested in it. This will also be a blog post. I don't know whether it will be later this week or early next week, um, but I will be talking about um, my experience with this and the brown sheep fiber. So, and they generously donated. Um, it's now 18 ounces of fiber going to um, one of the prize winners. Um, if you've spun on our team, the Tour de Fleece is over. So that means get your finished photos in. I have set up a finished thread. It's called Le Champs Elysee, which is how the French finish the tour. They ride down the main boulevard to the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. And um, I have called the thread that because that is the finish. Uh, take a picture of everything you spun this tour. Each person gets one entry into that thread and I have three prizes for winners. So I have the 18 ounces of fiber from Brown Sheep dyed in the pinks. I have a bag of eight ounces of nest fiber nestlets, which are little bumps of fiber. And then we had someone in the group donate a braid of Hello Yarn fiber. So those three prizes are up for grabs and I will be drawing for those tomorrow. Um, so get your, get your photos in and be done. The last thing is something I can't show you because I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a funny story. I, um, I wanted to, oh, and then I deleted those photos, didn't I? Yep. Let me see if I can pull them down. Um, I wanted to spin one more, um, braid for, well, okay. I take that back. I finished the pink braid on... Friday. And Saturday, I didn't do a lot of spinning because, no, I take that back. I finished it on Saturday. Um, Saturday, I uh, applied it and washed it, which is why it's still a little bit wet. Um, and then I knew that I was going to spinning on Sunday and I decided that I would start on another braid. And um, I had already picked out a braid. I showed it to you last week. It was called Happy Happy Thank You. And um, this past week, I watched um, a bunch of people in the Hello Yarn uh, Tour de Fleece uh, thread. Um, Hello Yarn has a Tour de Fleece team, much like I have a team. And on her team, of course, the requirement is that you spin um, Hello Yarn. So um, I my first spin was Hello Yarn, and then I had this other braid. And so I decided that I would go ahead and take it with me and spin it. But then this week, um, everybody was posting their lovely spins, and um, a lot of people were spinning this braid that I had gotten earlier in the year, and I had thought I would give it away because it wasn't my colors. And the braid is Blue Face Lester, which I enjoy spinning, and the colorway is called Migration. All of Hello Yarn's braids this year are themed after birds. 
Um, they are themed after photographs of birds and painting of birds that a husband and wife team have been helping her with. Anyway, this one is yellows and greens and it's kind of swampy and it's just not my colors. And I had um, thought that I wouldn't like it. And then everybody started spinning theirs and it looked really, really pretty. And all this week I looked at everybody's spins and I was like, you know, maybe I kind of want to spin that bright. So yesterday morning, I threw caution to the wind. I pulled out the braid, I braided it up and took a picture so that I would have one. And I took it with me to spinning. Now, normally when I go to spinning, like I said, I spin about two ounces in uh, the two to four hours that we're there and we snack and we talk and whatever. Yesterday, I spun the whole bump in four hours. In fact, I spun it in about three and a half hours and then stopped and was like, oh my goodness, I just spun a whole braid. And I normally don't spin that fast. And so I was pretty sure that I had spun thicker than usual. And I was totally right on that account. Usually I um, get anywhere between 300 and 400 yards, um, maybe a little bit more per four ounces um, of two ply. And uh, this one, I only got about 250 yards. Um, but I came home last night and I got home about six o'clock and was like, you know, I could just ply this skein and I would have one more skein finished for the tour. Now, the reason I can't show you the skein is because I'm an idiot. And um, this morning I was like, oh yeah, I have to wash that. And I stuck it in a bath with some eucalyptus so that it could um, be thwacked and be finished. And then I thought about the fact that I had meant to show it on the podcast and now it's sopping wet. <laughs> it's hanging in my bathtub to dry. Um, so I thought I would show you. I did post it yesterday on Instagram, but this is how it came out. This is before I've washed and blocked it, so it looks a little wonky. Um, but that is my final spin for the tour. So, oops, that didn't even show it to you. Good Lord, I am not helpful, am I? Here, there we go. It is greens and yellows, and it is overall a pretty neutral braid, um, but I was thinking it might be nice for a hat or um, some such. It is not super washed, so unfortunately, while I would think about using it color-wise for a baby, I don't know that I can. Um, and like I said, I got about 250 yards, which means I spun kind of a worsted to DK. So that means that I finished my tour with just under 24 ounces spun, and let me think about this, 15, 5, 2,000, about 2250 yards spun. That is pretty well done for me. I um, did not anticipate spinning so much. I had hoped to get through that first big spin and then maybe get the brown sheep on the wheel. Um, I had no idea I'd get a third one in. So um, I am really pleased with that. Um, now I'm gonna start happy, happy thank you. Although I don't know if I will start it this week because I am working some extra hours before I leave so that I can go to uh, Stitches Midwest. So I think that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. I will add some pictures to Instagram as I can of Stitches Midwest. I'm sure I'll come home with a few new stash acquisitions to share, hopefully some knitting to show you and maybe some fun stories. So until I see you next time, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.